So today we are here because of the amazing programme, the Reciprocal Mentoring Programme. And I want to come to you first, Mark. What was the main reason why you signed up to this programme? I think for a number of reasons. Firstly, it provides a real insight into understanding some of the challenges uh, of, of our community, both within the institution and, and out with the institution. Plus the fact, I, I think as, as a, you know, I could describe myself as a decision maker within the institution, having that broader dimension that informs those decisions, I, I felt was a particularly important part of, of the process. Oh, brilliant. And Tina, what was your reason? So, I mean, I wanted to get to know Sean, so actually your contacts in Liverpool and, you know, what you're doing is absolutely fantastic and to learn about how you've gone through your life and work life um, was, I knew was going to really inform what we decided to do at the, at the university to improve the student experience and also the staff members and, you know, it's been an absolutely amazing experience for me because I've just learned so much from Chantal and the stuff she does is absolutely amazing. I, I can't believe you found time to do it all, to be honest, Chantal. That's why I'm always late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and yeah, it's just unbelievable. So yeah, that's why I did it. I just wanted to get involved to, to learn about what it's like to live through those experiences because mm -hmm. I don't think going on any training programmes, I've done you know, unconscious bias, I've read books and stuff like that, but you just don't get the same... Yeah experience from it so so for you Chantel did you want it to be a conversation did you want to set them homework did, how did you want to plan these conversations I kind of more knew what I didn't want so you know like as a black person we're always in spaces with loads of white people and I kind of I didn't want it to be tokenistic kind of think that's literally yeah. the first thing I said to Mark and Tina. I was like I don't want this to be something that you know you just tell your friends about I want this to be something meaningful and I'm going to share things with you I'm just going to be really really honest in the hope that as Tina said listening is possibly one of the most powerful things you can do in the fight against racism not reading you know like, like do read reports yeah. do read and whatnot but listening to personal stories and experiences I don't know what it is about it it's just so much more powerful than you know getting that first-hand experience and hearing someone tell their story than just you know hearing about it on the radio or just listening to it there's nothing quite like it so for you know I've had quite a few experiences as a black person as most of us have yeah. Why not use them to try and ensure that, you know, students, staff coming through the doors of LJMU, we have a leadership team who've got that understanding and are doing everything within their power to make it easier for them to achieve. And for you, Tina, what um, what kind of homework um, did, <laughs> <laughs> did Chantelle give you? Um, we didn't really, um, she didn't really set me homework. It was more, some of the things she said led me to like white privilege or something that I hadn't appreciated until I had the the coaching yeah. of Chantel and you know you, you read you read about it but it's not the same as, as learning about it from someone yeah. and I think you know the the whole you know I'm sick of talking to white people about white privilege that's yeah. that I could understand why people are um having got to to grips with it yeah. so Chantel <laughs> <laughs> sound like my teacher <laughs> you know a lot of conversation um that we've had has, has always been about, you know, we've had a lot of talking, but now it's time for action. Yeah. Do you feel with your relationship with both Mark and Tina that there's going to be action, some real positive action? Yeah, definitely, because we've already got and um, you know, a recruitment drive which is happening, which is focused on positive action. And most of the conversations that I've had with Mark and Tina have been, okay, from because you know, you'd only need to know me for five seconds to know that when I talk, it's just like everywhere, you know. <laughs> and basically it's like a jigsaw, and poor Mark and Tina have to kind of put the pieces together <laughs> and work out what the point was and what I was saying. <laughs> but they're very good at doing that. You know, you're listening ten out of ten. <laughs> because sometimes I'm just talking. <laughs> You know what, I, and what I love about it is you can sense the energy that it was so easy for, yeah. you know, even though yeah. the, the conversations were separate, it just feels like they were so easy and you have known each other for so long, you know, it's it's crazy. And I, and I get the sense that it's been an, an amazing experience because not that many people get this. Um, Tina, is there any question you'd like to ask Chantel? Well, what, I'll put you on a spot here. Yeah. <laughs> What what do you think we should do um, as sort of a as a transformational thing for to to improve race equality? What sort of 
things would you see or want to see happen at LGMU? I think some of the plans that are already kind of in place at the moment are quite powerful in terms of positive action, not just being about entry-level positions, but career progression and whole organisations understanding the force and the sentiment behind that. I think that's powerful. I think it's really important to look not only at formalised spaces, but informal spaces and the barriers that might be present for black people to access those spaces because quite often the informal stuff, you know, whether it be socials at university or, you know, going out with colleagues, that impacts the formalised spaces as well. So it's really important that black people have yeah. access to both mm-hmm. spaces. And if they're not present in those spaces, being like, okay, is this a space that's welcome to a black person? Are we encouraging our black community to access those spaces? Mm-hmm. And I kind of think just continuing along the lines that you have kind of set out to do and hopefully we'll get there. So I want to ask um, Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot here. How would you like to see this grow? I would like to see every member of staff having the opportunity, yeah. if it was at all possible, yeah. uh, to engage with the programme, with, with that shadow of a doubt, and give every every student an opportunity to engage yeah. uh, equally. And there is some of that work that goes on, but it's not it's not consistent and it's not systematic. So I think building that in would be would be particularly important. And Tina, <laughs> <laughs> we've had time to think. Yeah. <laughs> To be honest, it, it is similar because yesterday when we um, closed the reciprocal mentoring programme, we talked, well, it was obvious how powerful it's been for people, but it's what do you do to scale it up? I can't think of anything else as influential as this type oh, yeah. of thing. It's something that we need to do. I just, I don't know the answer yet, yeah. but I think scaling this sort of thing up um, would would be really, yeah. really helpful to change in the race equality. Because this is yeah. just next level. It is. You know, I've, I've got every faith in this university and what you've done. And I think it's definitely something that no matter who watches this, they'll they'll be jealous and they will need to implement it themselves, Absolutely. whether it's education yes. or it's law or whatever. I think it's it's brilliant. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.